to try to move the president out of out of this contentious state so they can start focusing on winning the Senate and winning those two seats in Georgia. They may know it's over, but they're not acting like it, at least not quite yet. You were certainly right to bring up the recount thresholds in a number of states where at this point the margins are such, it's not clear whether the president will even fall within them to be able to have a recount trigger. He's asked for one in Wisconsin, that one the candidate is allowed to do so. Uh, but you're right, they usually find a few dozen votes, maybe a hundred or two if you're lucky. And for all the thoughts going into this election, looking at the Florida 2000 situation and wondering if we could have a, a repeat of that scenario. It doesn't quite apply here. Not only was that, of course, only 500 odd votes, um, it was in one state. Here, we're talking thousands of votes in a number of the, those battlegrounds, including Pennsylvania, with which the president really can't win without. And it's not just Pennsylvania, it's several states. Uh, so the, the Trump aides privately concede that these legal challenges really aren't going to go anywhere, even if there are any teeth to them, even if they, are happen even if they happen to be successful in one state, which seems unlikely, that wouldn't be nearly uh, enough. So now the question is, what next? And as much as the Biden-Harris transition team is hitting the ground running, they have indeed announced that coronavirus task force already this morning. We're going to hear from the president-elect later today. We heard from his speech on his speech Saturday night calling for unity. Eyes are on the president. We, he stayed out of sight this weekend, just two trips to his golf course. In fact, he was on his golf course Saturday when the race was called uh, for Joe Biden. Aides suggest they're trying to figure out what's next. There are, uh, they're watching Capitol Hill to see if Mitch McConnell will start signaling that, look, it's time to give this up. But he has received support, supports of, statements of support from the usual characters, Senator Graham, Senator Hawley, and others who say he should keep fighting, sort of a dangerous suggestion that, indeed, the results of this race are invalid. Uh, those close to the president don't suggest as we report this morning in the AP, don't suggest that he will ever formally concede. The question is, how much of a fight does he want to put up? There is a suggestion, there are at least conversations, that he should start having rallies in some of these states again, where the vote is still being counted and contested. Others suggest that he should take a quieter path, that they don't think that he will, of course, concede, but suggest that he should just, you know, to let this process go, and perhaps, uh, and then even some aides suggest, decamp to Mar-a-Lago uh, for much of the transition. One other thought, they're watching what Fox News says, too, and if their anchors there are trying to stay signal him uh, to tell him uh, what to do. But it should be noted, for a campaign that has had such sound, such fury, it may have come to an end Saturday at a landscaping facility in a rough part Jeez. of Philadelphia uh, may have been, yeah. uh, where this ride that began with a golden escalator uh, may have ended, in fact, uh, at a rather more humble uh, location. Next to a uh, porn shop uh, on, in a strip mall. Yeah. Uh, right off of I-95, which, of course, Willie, I've just described a good part of your life. Uh, I'm joking, kids. How did I'm I know joking. this was coming? Willie, I, How did I know that was knew coming? That was, you knew that was coming. Um, so, so uh, Willie, what doesn't make a lot of sense is for Donald Trump to know or, or to have one challenge after another. He's going to lose every single challenge. There's not a challenge out there that he can win. He's, he's actually, I was going to say... He's lost these states by the same margin that he won the states four years ago. But actually, he's going to lose Pennsylvania in the end by more votes uh, than he won it in 2016. Uh, of course, he, he's going to he's going to lose Michigan uh, by far more votes uh, than he won it uh, in 2016. You go out to Arizona, there's just I, unless something bizarre happens in the final votes there. He's not going to get close to the 200 votes uh, that that he needs uh, for for the state to then decide whether he has a recount or not. And he has problems. He's got Republicans running the operations in Arizona. He's got Republicans running the operations in Georgia. And so, you know, is he really going to accuse Brian Kemp of rigging the election or do see of rigging the elections against him? And by the way, if you're in Georgia... And you got two Senate races coming up and literally the future of American government rests on those two seats. Because if they make jackasses out of themselves in Georgia and voters are turned off, then Democrats can win both of those seats and Democrats control Washington, D.C. So it doesn't make sense for them to keep, you know, driving the car off the cliff for Donald Trump because he's lost. It's over. 
Rupert Murdoch is saying it through the Wall Street Journal and through the New York Post. I mean, the Repu world Republicans is it. understand it. George W. Bush is saying it. Other Republicans are saying it. There's no upside for Mitch McConnell to continue this charade.